The Boeing 747 is an American wide-body commercial jet airliner and cargo aircraft. The first wide-body airplane produced, it was the first plane dubbed a jumbo jet. Its distinctive hump upper deck along the forward part of the aircraft has made it one of the most recognizable aircraft. Manufactured by Boeing's commercial airplane unit in the United States, the 747 was originally planned to have 150% greater capacity than the Boeing 707, a common large commercial aircraft of the 1960s. First flown commercially in 1970, the 747 held the passenger capacity record for 37 years. The Quadjet 747 uses a double deck configuration for part of its length and is available in passenger, freighter, and other versions. Boeing designed the 747's hump-like upper deck to serve as a first-class lounge or extra seating, and to allow the aircraft to be easily converted to a cargo carrier by removing seats and installing a front cargo door. Boeing expected supersonic airliners—the development of which was announced in the early 1960s— to render the 747 and other subsonic airliners obsolete, while the demand for subsonic cargo aircraft would remain robust well into the future. Though the 747 was expected to become obsolete after 400 were sold, production passed 1,000 in 1993. By July 2018, 1,546 aircraft had been built, with 22 of the 747-8 variants remaining on order. As of January 2017, 60 of the jets have been lost in accidents in which a total of 3,722 people died. The 747 to 400, the most common variant in service, has a high subsonic cruise speed of Mach 0.85 to 0.855, up to 570 miles per hour or 920 kilometers per hour, with an intercontinental range of 7,260 nautical miles 8350 statute miles or 13450 kilometers the 747 to 400 can carry 416 passengers in a typical three class layout 524 passengers in a typical two class layout or 660 passengers in a high density one class configuration the newest version of the aircraft, the 747-8, is in production and received certification in 2011. Deliveries of the 747-8F freighter version began in October 2011, deliveries of the 747-8I passenger version began in May 2012. Topic. Development. Topic background In 1963, the United States Air Force started a series of study projects on a very large strategic transport aircraft. Although the C-141 Starlifter was being introduced, officials believed that a much larger and more capable aircraft was needed, especially to carry cargo that would not fit in any existing aircraft. These studies led to initial requirements for the CX Heavy Logistics System CXHLS in March 1964 for an aircraft with a load capacity of 180,000 pounds 81,600 kilograms and a speed of Mach 0.75 500 miles per hour or 800 kilometers per hour, and an unrefueled range of 5,000 nautical miles 9,300 kilometers with a payload of 1 115,000 pounds 52,200 kilograms. The payload bay had to be 17 feet 5.18 meters wide by 13.5 feet 4.11 meters high and 100 feet 30 meters long with access through doors at the front and rear. The desire to keep the number of engines to four required new engine designs with greatly increased power and better fuel economy. 
In May 1964, airframe proposals arrived from Boeing, Douglas, General Dynamics, Lockheed, and Martin Marietta. Engine proposals were submitted by General Electric, Curtis Wright, and Pratt and Whitney. Boeing, Douglas, and Lockheed were given additional study contracts for the airframe, along with General Electric and Pratt and Whitney for the engines. The airframe proposals shared a number of features. As the CXHLS needed to be able to be loaded from the front, a door had to be included where the cockpit usually was. All of the companies solved this problem by moving the cockpit above the cargo area. Douglas had a small pod just forward and above the wing. Lockheed used a long spine running the length of the aircraft with the wing spar passing through it, while Boeing blended the two with a longer pod that ran from just behind the nose to just behind the wing. In 1965, Lockheed's aircraft design and General Electric's engine design were selected for the new C-5 Galaxy Transport, which was the largest military aircraft in the world at the time. The nose door and raised cockpit concepts would be carried over to the design of the 747. Topic. Airliner proposal. The 747 was conceived while air travel was increasing in the 1960s. The era of commercial jet transportation, led by the enormous popularity of the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8, had revolutionized long-distance travel. Even before it lost the CXHLS contract, Boeing was asked by Juan Tripp, president of Pan American World Airways Pan Am, one of their most important airline customers, to build a passenger aircraft more than twice the size of the 707. During this time, airport congestion, worsened by increasing numbers of passengers carried on relatively small aircraft, became a problem that Tripp thought could be addressed by a larger new aircraft. In 1965, Joe Sutter was transferred from Boeing's 737 development team to manage the design studies for the new airliner, already assigned the model number 747. Sutter began a design study with Pan Am and other airlines, to better understand their requirements. At the time, it was widely thought that the 747 would eventually be superseded by supersonic transport aircraft. Boeing responded by designing the 747 so that it could be adapted easily to carry freight and remain in production even if sales of the passenger version declined. In the freighter role, the clear need was to support the containerized shipping methodologies that were being widely introduced at about the same time. Standard shipping containers are 8 feet 2.4 meters square at the front slightly higher due to attachment points and available in 20 and 40 feet 6.1 and 12 meters lengths. This meant that it would be possible to support a two-wide, two-high stack of containers two or three ranks deep with a fuselage size similar to the earlier CXHLS project. In April 1966, Pan Am ordered 25 747 to 100 aircraft for $525 million. During the ceremonial 747 contract signing banquet in Seattle on Boeing's 50th anniversary, Juan Tripp predicted that the 747 would be a great weapon for peace, competing with intercontinental missiles for mankind's destiny. As launch customer, and because of its early involvement before placing a formal order, Pan Am was able to influence the design and development of the 747 to an extent unmatched by a single airline before or since. Topic design effort Ultimately, the high-winged CXHLS Boeing design was not used for the 747, although technologies developed for their bid had an influence. The original design included a full-length double-deck fuselage with eight across seating and two aisles on the lower deck and seven across seating and two aisles on the upper deck. 
However, concern over evacuation routes and limited cargo carrying capability caused this idea to be scrapped in early 1966 in favor of a wider single deck design. The cockpit was, therefore, placed on a shortened upper deck so that a freight loading door could be included in the nose cone. This design feature produced the 747's distinctive bulge. In early models it was not clear what to do with the small space in the pod behind the cockpit, and this was initially specified as a «lounge» area with no permanent seating. A different configuration that had been considered in order to keep the flight deck out of the way for freight loading had the pilots below the passengers, and was dubbed the Anteater, one of the principal technologies that enabled an aircraft as large as the 747 to be drawn up was the high-bypass turbofan engine. The engine technology was thought to be capable of delivering double the power of the earlier turbojets while consuming one-third less fuel. General Electric had pioneered the concept but was committed to developing the engine for the C-5 Galaxy and did not enter the commercial market until later. Pratt & Whitney was also working on the same principle and, by late 1966 Boeing, Pan Am and Pratt and & Whitney agreed to develop a new engine, designated the JT-9D to power the 747. The project was designed with a new methodology called fault tree analysis, which allowed the effects of a failure of a single part to be studied to determine its impact on other systems. To address concerns about safety and flyability, the 747's design included structural redundancy, redundant hydraulic systems, quadruple main landing gear and dual control surfaces. Additionally, some of the most advanced high-lift devices used in the industry were included in the new design, to allow it to operate from existing airports. These included slats running almost the entire length of the wing, as well as complex three-part slotted flaps along the trailing edge of the wing. The wing's complex three-part flaps increase wing area by 21% and lift by 90% when fully deployed compared to their non-deployed configuration. Boeing agreed to deliver the first 747 to Pan Am by the end of 1969. The delivery date left 28 months to design the aircraft, which was two-thirds of the normal time. The schedule was so fast-paced that the people who worked on it were given the nickname, The Incredibles. Developing the aircraft was such a technical and financial challenge that management was said to have bet the company when it started the project. Topic. Production plant As Boeing did not have a plant large enough to assemble the giant airliner, they chose to build a new plant. The company considered locations in about 50 cities, and eventually decided to build the new plant some 30 miles 50 kilometers north of Seattle on a site adjoining a military base at Payne Field near Everett, Washington. It bought the 780-acre, 320 hectares site in June 1966. Developing the 747 had been a major challenge, and building its assembly plant was also a huge undertaking. Boeing President William M. Allen asked Malcolm T. Stamper, then head of the company's turbine division, to oversee construction of the Everett factory and to start production of the 747. To level the site, more than 4 million cubic yards 3 million cubic meters of earth had to be moved. Time was so short that the 747's full-scale mock-up was built before the factory roof above it was finished. The plant is the largest building by volume ever built, and has been substantially expanded several times to permit construction of other models of Boeing wide-body commercial jets. Topic. Development and testing Before the first 747 was fully assembled, testing began on many components and systems. One important test involved the evacuation of 560 volunteers from a cabin mock-up via the aircraft's emergency chutes. 
The first full-scale evacuation took two and a half minutes instead of the maximum of 90 seconds mandated by the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, and several volunteers were injured. Subsequent test evacuations achieved the 90-second goal but caused more injuries. Most problematic was evacuation from the aircraft's upper deck. Instead of using a conventional slide, volunteer passengers escaped by using a harness attached to a reel. Tests also involved taxiing such a large aircraft. Boeing built an unusual training device known as Waddle's Wagon. Named for a 747 test pilot, Jack Waddell, that consisted of a mock-up cockpit mounted on the roof of a truck. While the first 747s were still being built, the device allowed pilots to practice taxi maneuvers from a high upper deck position. On September 30, 1968, the first 747 was rolled out of the Everett Assembly Building before the world's press and representatives of the 26 airlines that had ordered the airliner. Over the following months, preparations were made for the first flight, which took place on February 9, 1969, with test pilots Jack Waddell and Brian Weigel at the controls and Jess Wallach at the flight engineer's station. Despite a minor problem with one of the flaps, the flight confirmed that the 747 handled extremely well. The 747 was found to be largely immune to Dutch roll. A phenomenon that had been a major hazard to the early swept wing jets. During later stages of the flight test program, flutter testing showed that the wings suffered oscillation under certain conditions. This difficulty was partly solved by reducing the stiffness of some wing components. However, a particularly severe high-speed flutter problem was solved only by inserting depleted uranium counterweights as ballast in the outboard engine nacellas of the early 747s. This measure caused anxiety when these aircraft crashed, for example El Al Flight 1862 at Amsterdam in 1992 with 282 kilograms 622 pounds of uranium in the tailplane, horizontal stabilizer. The flight test program was hampered by problems with the 747's JT-9D engines. Difficulties included engine stalls caused by rapid throttle movements and distortion of the turbine casings after a short period of service. The problems delayed 747 deliveries for several months. Up to 20 aircraft at the Everett plant were stranded while awaiting engine installation. The program was further delayed when one of the five test aircraft suffered serious damage during a landing attempt at Renton Municipal Airport, site of the company's Renton factory. On December 13, 1969 a test aircraft was being taken to have test equipment removed and a cabin installed when pilot Ralph C. Coakley undershot the airport's short runway. The 747's right, outer landing gear was torn off and two engine nacellas were damaged. However, these difficulties did not prevent Boeing from taking a test aircraft to the 28th Paris Air Show in mid-1969, where it was displayed to the public for the first time. The 747 received its FAA Airworthiness Certificate in December 1969, clearing it for introduction into service. The huge cost of developing the 747 and building the Everett factory meant that Boeing had to borrow heavily from a banking syndicate. During the final months before delivery of the first aircraft, the company had to repeatedly request additional funding to complete the project. Had this been refused, Boeing's survival would have been threatened. The firm's debt exceeded $2 billion, with the $1.2 billion owed to the banks setting a record for all companies. Allen later said, It was really too large a project for us. Ultimately, the gamble succeeded, and Boeing held a monopoly in very large passenger aircraft production for many years. Topic. Entry into service 
On January 15, 1970, First Lady of the United States Pat Nixon christened Pan Am's first 747, at Dulles International Airport later Washington Dulles International Airport in the presence of Pan Am Chairman Najib Halabi. Instead of champagne, red, white, and blue water was sprayed on the aircraft. The 747 entered service on January 22, 1970, on Pan Am's New York-London route. The flight had been planned for the evening of January 21, but engine overheating made the original aircraft unusable. Finding a substitute delayed the flight by more than six hours to the following day when Clipper Victor was used. The 747 enjoyed a fairly smooth introduction into service, overcoming concerns that some airports would not be able to accommodate an aircraft that large. Although technical problems occurred, they were relatively minor and quickly solved. After the aircraft's introduction with Pan Am, other airlines that had bought the 747 to stay competitive began to put their own 747s into service. Boeing estimated that half of the early 747 sales were to airlines desiring the aircraft's long range rather than its payload capacity. While the 747 had the lowest potential operating cost per seat, this could only be achieved when the aircraft was fully loaded, costs per seat increased rapidly as occupancy declined. A moderately loaded 747, one with only 70% of its seats occupied, used more than 95% of the fuel needed by a fully occupied 747. Nonetheless, many flag carriers purchased the 747 due to its prestige, even if it made no sense economically, to operate. During the 1970s and 1980s, there was often over 30 regularly scheduled 747s at John F. Kennedy International Airport. The recession of 1969-1970 greatly affected Boeing. For the year and a half after September 1970, it only sold two 747s in the world, and did not sell any to an American carrier for almost three years. When economic problems in the U.S. and other countries after the 1973 oil crisis led to reduced passenger traffic, several airlines found they did not have enough passengers to fly the 747 economically, and they replaced them with the smaller and recently introduced McDonnell Douglas DC-10 and Lockheed L-1011 TriStar Trijet Wide Bodies and later the 767 and A300, A310 Twinjets. Having tried replacing coach seats on its 747s with piano bars in an attempt to attract more customers, American Airlines eventually relegated its 747s to cargo service and in 1983 exchanged them with Pan Am for smaller aircraft. Delta Airlines also removed its 747s from service after several years. Later, Delta acquired 747s again in 2008 as part of its merger with Northwest Airlines, although it retired the 747-400 fleet in December 2017. International flights bypassing traditional hub airports and landing at smaller cities became more common throughout the 1980s, thus eroding the 747's original market. Many international carriers continue to use the 747 on Pacific routes. In Japan, 747s on domestic routes were configured to carry nearly the maximum passenger capacity. Topic: Improved 747 versions. After the initial 747-100, Boeing developed the 100B, a higher maximum takeoff weight MTOW variant, and the 100SR short range, with higher passenger capacity. Increased maximum takeoff weight allows aircraft to carry more fuel and have longer range. The minus 200 model followed in 1971, featuring more powerful engines and a higher MTOW. 
passenger, freighter and combination passenger freighter versions of the Minus 200 were produced. The shortened 747 SP special performance with a longer range was also developed and entered service in 1976. The 747 line was further developed with the launch of the 747 to 300 in 1980. The 300 series resulted from Boeing studies to increase the seating capacity of the 747, during which modifications such as fuselage plugs and extending the upper deck over the entire length of the fuselage were rejected. The first 747 to 300, completed in 1983, included a stretched upper deck, increased cruise speed, and increased seating capacity. The Minus 300 variant was previously designated 747 SUD for stretched upper deck, then 747 to 200 SUD, followed by 747 EUD, before the 747 to 300 designation was used. Passenger, short range and combination freighter passenger versions of the 300 series were produced. In 1985, development of the longer range 747 to 400 began. The variant had a new glass cockpit, which allowed for a cockpit crew of two instead of three, new engines, lighter construction materials, and a redesigned interior. Development costs soared, and production delays occurred as new technologies were incorporated at the request of airlines. Insufficient workforce experience and reliance on overtime contributed to early production problems on the 747-400. The minus 400 entered service in 1989. In 1991, a record-breaking 1,087 passengers were airlifted aboard a 747 to Israel as part of Operation Solomon. The 747 remained the heaviest commercial aircraft in regular service until the debut of the Antonov and 124 Ruslan in 1982. Variants of the 747 to 400 surpassed the in 120 Fa's weight in 2000. The Antonov and 225 Mariah cargo transport, which debuted in 1988, remains the world's largest aircraft by several measures, including the most accepted measures of maximum takeoff weight and length. One aircraft has been completed and is in service as of 2017. The Hughes H 4 Hercules is the largest aircraft by wingspan, but completed a single flight. Topic. Further developments Since the arrival of the 747-400, several stretching schemes for the 747 have been proposed. Boeing announced the larger 747-500X and 600X preliminary designs in 1996. The new variants would have cost more than $5 billion to develop, and interest was not sufficient to launch the program. In 2000, Boeing offered the more modest 747X and 747X stretch derivatives as alternatives to the Airbus A3XX. However, the 747X family was unable to attract enough interest to enter production. A year later, Boeing switched from the 747X studies to pursue the Sonic Cruiser, and after the Sonic Cruiser program was put on hold, the 787 Dreamliner. Some of the ideas developed for the 747X were used on the 747-400ER, a longer-range variant of the 747-400. After several variants were proposed but later abandoned, some industry observers became skeptical of new aircraft proposals from Boeing. However, in early 2004, Boeing announced tentative plans for the 747 Advance that were eventually adopted. Similar in nature to the 747X, the stretched 747 Advance used technology from the 787 to modernize the design and its systems. 
The 747 remained the largest passenger airliner in service until the Airbus A380 began airline service in 2007. On November 14, 2005, Boeing announced it was launching the 747 Advanced as the Boeing 747-8. The last 747-400s were completed in 2009. As of 2011, most orders of the 747-8 have been for the freighter variant. On February 8, 2010, the 747-8 freighter made its maiden flight. The first delivery of the 747-8 went to Cargolux in 2011. The 1500th produced Boeing 747 was delivered in June 2014. In January 2016, Boeing stated it was reducing 747 to 8 production to 6 a year beginning in September 2016, incurring a $569 million post tax charge against its fourth quarter 2015 profits. At the end of 2015, the company had 20 orders outstanding. On January 29, 2016, Boeing announced that it had begun the preliminary work on the modifications to a commercial 747-8 for the next Air Force One presidential aircraft, expected to be operational by 2020. On July 12, 2016, Boeing announced that it had finalized terms of acquisition with Volga DNEPR Group for 20-747-8 freighters, valued at $7.58 billion at list prices. Four aircraft were delivered beginning in 2012. Volga DNEPR Group is the parent of three major Russian air freight carriers, Volga DNEPR Airlines, Airbridge Cargo Airlines and Atran Airlines. The new 747-8 freighters will replace Airbridge Cargo's current 747-400 aircraft and expand the airline's fleet and will be acquired through a mix of direct purchases and leasing over the next six years, Boeing said, on July 27, 2016, in its quarterly report to the Securities and Exchange Commission, Boeing discussed the potential termination of 747 production due to insufficient demand and market for the aircraft. With a firm order backlog of 21 aircraft and a production rate of 6 per year, program accounting has been reduced to 1,555 aircraft, and the 747 line could be closed in the third quarter of 2019. In October 2016, UPS Airlines ordered 14 to 8 Fs to add capacity, along with 14 options, which it took in February 2018, bringing the total number of minus 8 Fs ordered to 28. The backlog then stood at 25 aircraft, though several of these are orders from airlines that no longer intend to take delivery. Deliveries are scheduled through 2022. Topic. Design The Boeing 747 is a large, wide-body airliner with four wing-mounted engines. Its wings have a high sweep angle of 37.5 degrees for a fast, efficient cruise of Mach 0.84 to 0.88, depending on the variant. The sweep also reduces the wingspan, allowing the 747 to use existing hangars. Its seating capacity is over 366 with a 3-4-3 seat arrangement, a cross section of three seats, an aisle, four seats, another aisle, and three seats in economy class and a 2-3-2 layout in first class on the main deck. The upper deck has a 3-3 seat arrangement in economy class and a 2-2-2 layout in first class. Raised above the main deck, the cockpit creates a hump. This raised cockpit allows front loading of cargo on freight variants. The upper deck behind the cockpit provides space for a lounge and or extra seating. The stretched upper deck became available as an alternative on the 747-100B variant and later as standard beginning on the 747-300. 
the upper deck was stretched more on the 747 to 8. The 747 cockpit roof section also has an escape hatch from which crew can exit during the events of an emergency if they cannot do so through the cabin. The 747's maximum takeoff weight ranges from 735,000 pounds kilograms for the minus 100 to 970,000 pounds kilograms for the minus 8. Its range has increased from 5,300 nautical miles, 6,100 miles, 9,800 kilometers on the minus 100 to 8,000 nmi, 9,200 miles, 14,815 kilometers on the 8i. The 747 has redundant structures along with four redundant hydraulic systems and four main landing gears, each with four wheels. These provide a good spread of support on the ground ground and safety in case of tire blowouts. The main gear are redundant so that landing can be performed on two opposing landing gears if the others are not functioning properly. The 747 also has split control surfaces and was designed with sophisticated triple slotted flaps that minimize landing speeds and allow the 747 to use standard length runways. For transportation of spare engines, the 747 can accommodate a non functioning fifth pod engine under the aircraft's port wing between the inner functioning engine and the fuselage. This fifth engine mount point is also used by Virgin Orbit's Launcher One program. Virgin Orbit's 747 to 400, dubbed Cosmic Girl, carries the orbital class rocket to cruise altitude, where the rocket is deployed and then carries its small satellite payload the rest of the way to space. Topic: Variants. The 747-100 was the original variant launched in 1966. The 747-200 soon followed, with its launch in 1968. The 747-300 was launched in 1980 and was followed by the 747-400 in 1985. Ultimately, the 747-8 was announced in 2005. Several versions of each variant have been produced, and many of the early variants were in production simultaneously. The International Civil Aviation Organization ICAO classifies variants using a shortened code formed by combining the model number and the variant designator, e.g. B741. For all minus 100 models. Topic 747 to 100. The first 747 minus 100s were built with six upper deck windows, three per side, to accommodate upstairs lounge areas. Later, as airlines began to use the upper deck for premium passenger seating instead of lounge space, Boeing offered a 10 window upper deck as an option. Some early minus 100s were retrofitted with the new configuration. The minus 100 was equipped with Pratt and Whitney JT9 D3A engines. No freighter version of this model was developed, but many 747 minus 100s were converted into freighters. A total of 168,747 minus 100s were built, 167 were delivered to customers, while Boeing kept the prototype, City of Everett. Topic 747SR Responding to requests from Japanese airlines for a high-capacity aircraft to serve domestic routes between major cities, Boeing developed the 747SR as a short-range version of the 747-100 with lower fuel capacity and greater payload capability. With increased economy class seating, up to 498 passengers could be carried in early versions and up to 550 in later models. 
The 747SR had an economic design life objective of 52,000 flights during 20 years of operation, compared to 24,600 flights in 20 years for the standard 747. The initial 747SR model, the 100SR, had a strengthened body structure and landing gear to accommodate the added stress accumulated from a greater number of takeoffs and landings. Extra structural support was built into the wings, fuselage, and the landing gear along with a 20% reduction in fuel capacity. The initial order for the 100SR, four aircraft for Japan Airlines JAL, later Japan Airlines was announced on October 30, 1972, rollout occurred on August 3, 1973, and the first flight took place on August 31, 1973. The type was certified by the FAA on September 26, 1973, with the first delivery on the same day. The 100SR entered service with JAL, the type's sole customer, on October 7, 1973, and typically operated flights within Japan. 7-100SRs were built between 1973 and 1975, each with a 520,000-pound MTOW and Pratt & Whitney JT9D7A engines derated to 43,000 pounds force 190,000 N, of thrust, following the 100SR. Boeing produced the 100BSR, a 747SR variant with increased takeoff weight capability. Debuting in 1978, the 100BSR also incorporated structural modifications for a high cycle to flying hour ratio. A related standard 100B model debuted in 1979. The 100BSR first flew on November 3, 1978, with first delivery to all Nippon Airways ANA on December 21, 1978. A total of 20-100BSRs were produced for ANA and JAL. The 100BSR had a 600,000 pounds MTOW and was powered by the same JT9D7A or General Electric CF6-45 engines used on the minus 100 Senior. ANA operated this variant on domestic Japanese routes with 455 or 456 seats until retiring its last aircraft in March 2006. In 1986, two 100BSR SUD models, featuring the stretched upper deck SUD of the minus 300, were produced for JAL. The type's maiden flight occurred on February 26, 1986, with FAA certification and first delivery on March 24, 1986. JAL operated the 100BSR SUD with 563 seats on domestic routes until their retirement in the third quarter of 2006. While only two 100BSR SUDs were produced, in theory, standard 100Bs can be modified to the SUD certification. Overall, 29 747SRs were built, consisting of 7 100SRs, 20 100BSRs, and two 100BSR SUDs. Topic 747-100B The 747-100B model was developed from the 100SR, using its stronger airframe and landing gear design. The type had an increased fuel capacity of 48,070 US gal, 182,000 L, 40,030 imp gal, allowing for a 5,000 nautical mile, 9,300 kilometers, 5,800 miles range with a typical 452 passenger payload and an increased MTOW of 750,000 pounds, 340,000 kilograms was offered. The first 100B order, one aircraft for Iran Air, was announced on June 1, 1978. This aircraft first flew on June 20, 1979, received FAA certification on August 1, 1979, and was delivered the next day. 
Nine 100 Bs were built, one for Iran Air and eight for Saudi Arabian Airlines. Unlike the original Minus 100, the 100B was offered with Pratt & Whitney JT9D7A, General Electric CF6-50, or Rolls-Royce RB211-524 engines. However, only RB211-524 and JT9D7A Iran Air engines were ordered. The last 747-100B, EPIM was retired by Iran Air in 2014, the last commercial operator of the 747-100 and 100B. Topic 747 SP The development of the 747 SP stemmed from a joint request between Pan American World Airways and Iran Air, who were looking for a high capacity airliner with enough range to cover Pan Am's New York Middle Eastern routes and Iran Air's planned Tehran New York route. The Tehran New York route, when launched, was the longest non stop commercial flight in the world. The 747 SP is 48 feet 4 inches meters shorter than the 747 100. Fuselage sections were eliminated fore and aft of the wing, and the center section of the fuselage was redesigned to fit mating fuselage sections. The SP's flaps used a simplified single slotted configuration. The 747 SP, compared to earlier variants, had a tapering of the aft upper fuselage into the empennage, a double hinged rudder, and longer vertical and horizontal stabilizers. Power was provided by Pratt & Whitney JT9D7A, F, J, F, W, or Rolls-Royce RB211-524 engines. The 747 SP was granted a supplemental certificate on February 4, 1976 and entered service with launch customers Pan Am and Iran Air that same year. The aircraft was chosen by airlines wishing to serve major airports with short runways. A total of 45,747 SPs were built, with the 44th 747 SP delivered on August 30, 1982. In 1987, Boeing reopened the 747 SP production line after five years to build one last 747 SP for an order by the United Arab Emirates government. In addition to airline use, one 747 SP was modified for the NASA – German Aerospace Center Sophia experiment. Iran Air is the last civil operator of the type, its final 747 SP EPIAC was to be retired in June 2016. Topic 747 to 200 while the 747 to 100 powered by Pratt and Whitney JT9D3A engines offered enough payload and range for medium haul operations it was marginal for long haul route sectors the demand for longer range aircraft with increased payload quickly led to the improved minus 200 which featured more powerful engines increased mtow and greater range than the minus 100. a few early minus 200s retained the three window configuration of the minus 100 on the upper deck but most were built with a 10 window configuration on each side the 747-200 was produced in passenger, 200B, freighter, 200F, convertible, 200C, and combi, 200M, versions. The 747-200B was the basic passenger version, with increased fuel capacity and more powerful engines. It entered service in February 1971. In its first three years of production, the Minus 200 was equipped with Pratt & Whitney JT9D7 engines initially the only engine available. Range with a full passenger load started at over 5,000 nmi 9,300 km and increased to 6,000 nmi 11,000 km with later engines. Most minus 200 Bs had an internally stretched upper deck, allowing for up to 16 passenger seats. 
The freighter model, the 747-200F, could be fitted with or without a side cargo door, and had a capacity of 105 tons, 95.3 tons and an MTOW of up to 833,000 pounds 378,000 kilograms. It entered service in 1972 with Lufthansa. The convertible version, the 747-200C, could be converted between a passenger and a freighter or used in mixed configurations, and featured removable seats and a nose cargo door. The 200C could also be fitted with an optional side cargo door on the main deck. The Combi model, the 747-200M, could carry freight in the rear section of the main deck via a side cargo door. A removable partition on the main deck separated the cargo area at the rear from the passengers at the front. The 200M could carry up to 238 passengers in a three-class configuration with cargo carried on the main deck. The model was also known as the 747-200 Combi. As on the minus 100, a stretched upper deck SUD modification was later offered. A total of 10 converted 747-200s were operated by KLM. Union de Transports Aeriens UTA also had two aircraft converted, after launching the Minus 200 with Pratt & Whitney JT-9 D7 engines. On August 1, 1972 Boeing announced that it had reached an agreement with General Electric to certify the 747 with CF-6-50 series engines to increase the aircraft's market potential. Rolls-Royce followed 747 engine production with a launch order from British Airways for four aircraft. The option of RB211 524B engines was announced on June 17, 1975. The Minus 200 was the first 747 to provide a choice of power plant from the three major engine manufacturers. A total of 393 of the 747 to 200 versions had been built when production ended in 1991. Of these, 225 were 200B, 73 were 200F, 13 were 200C, 78 were 200M, and 4 were military. Many 747-200s remained in operation, although most large carriers have retired them from their fleets and sold them to smaller operators as of the early 2000s. Large carriers have sped up fleet retirement following the September 11 attacks and the subsequent drop in demand for air travel, scrapping some or turning others into freighters. Iran Air retired the last passenger 747 to 200 in May 2016, 36 years after it was delivered. As of July 2018, eight 747-200s remain in service as freighters. Topic 747 to 300 The 747 to 300 features a 23 foot 4 inch longer 7.11 meters upper deck than the minus 200. The stretched upper deck has two emergency exit doors and is the most visible difference between the minus 300 and previous models. Before being made standard on the 747-300, the stretched upper deck was previously offered as a retrofit, and appeared on two Japanese 747-100 senior aircraft. The 747-300 introduced a new straight stairway to the upper deck, instead of a spiral staircase on earlier variants, which creates room above and below for more seats. Minor aerodynamic changes allowed the minus 300's cruise speed to reach Mach 0.85 compared with Mach 0.84 on the minus 200 and minus 100 models, while retaining the same takeoff weight. The minus 300 could be equipped with the same Pratt and Whitney and Rolls Royce power plants as on the minus 200, as well as updated General Electric CF 6 80 C 2B1 engines. Swiss Air placed the first order for the 747 300 on June 11, 1980. 
The variant revived the 747-300 designation, which had been previously used on a design study that did not reach production. The 747-300 first flew on October 5, 1982, and the type's first delivery went to Swissair on March 23, 1983. Besides the passenger model, two other versions 300M, 300SR, were produced. The 747-300M features cargo capacity on the rear portion of the main deck, similar to the 200M, but with the stretched upper deck it can carry more passengers. The 747-300 Senior, a short-range, high-capacity domestic model, was produced for Japanese markets with a maximum seating for 584. No production freighter version of the 747-300 was built, but Boeing began modifications of used passenger-300 models into freighters in 2000, a total of 81 747-300 series aircraft were delivered, 56 for passenger use, 21-300M and 4-300 senior versions. In 1985, just two years after the Minus 300 entered service, the type was superseded by the announcement of the more advanced 747-400. The last 747-300 was delivered in September 1990 to Sabina. While some Minus 300 customers continued operating the type, several large carriers replaced their 747-300s with 747-400s. Air France, Air India, Pakistan International Airlines, and Qantas were some of the last major carriers to operate the 747-300. On December 29, 2008, Qantas flew its last scheduled 747-300 service, operating from Melbourne to Los Angeles via Auckland. In July 2015, Pakistan International Airlines retired their final 747-300 after 30 years of service. As of July 2018, only five 747-300s remain in commercial service, with Max Air 3, Mayan Air 1, and Transavia Export Airlines 1. Topic 747-400 The 747-400 is an improved model with increased range. It has wingtip extensions of 6 feet 1.8 meters and winglets of 6 feet 1.8 meters, which improve the type's fuel efficiency by 4% compared to previous 747 versions. The 747-400 introduced a new glass cockpit designed for a flight crew of two instead of three, with a reduction in the number of dials, gauges and knobs from 971 to 365 through the use of electronics. The type also features tail fuel tanks, revised engines, and a new interior. The longer range has been used by some airlines to bypass traditional fuel stops, such as Anchorage. Power plants include the Pratt & Whitney PW4062, General Electric CF6-80C2, and Rolls-Royce RB211-524. As a result of the Boeing 767 development overlapping with the 747-400's development, both aircraft can use the same three power plants and are even interchangeable between the two aircraft models. The minus 400 was offered in passenger, minus 400, freighter, 400F, combi, 400M, domestic, 400D, extended range passenger, 400ER, and extended range freighter, 400ERF, versions. Passenger versions retain the same upper deck as the minus 300, while the freighter version does not have an extended upper deck. The 747-400D was built for short-range operations with maximum seating for 624. Winglets were not included, but they can be retrofitted. Cruising speed is up to Mach 0.855 on different versions of the 747-400. 
The passenger version first entered service in February 1989 with launch customer Northwest Airlines on the Minneapolis to Phoenix route. The Combi version entered service in September 1989 with KLM, while the freighter version entered service in November 1993 with Cargolux. The 747-400 ERF entered service with Air France in October 2002, while the 747-400 ER entered service with Qantas, its sole customer, in November 2002. In January 2004, Boeing and Cathay Pacific launched the Boeing 747-400 Special Freighter Program, later referred to as the Boeing Converted Freighter (BCF), to modify passenger 747-400s for cargo use. The first 747-400 BCF was redelivered in December 2005. In March 2007, Boeing announced that it had no plans to produce further passenger versions of the minus 400. However, orders for 36-400F and 400ERF freighters were already in place at the time of the announcement. The last passenger version of the 747-400 was delivered in April 2005 to China Airlines. Some of the last built 747-400s were delivered with Dreamliner livery along with the modern signature interior from the Boeing 777. A total of 694 of the 747-400 series aircraft were delivered. At various times, the largest 747-400 operator has included Singapore Airlines, Japan Airlines, and British Airways with 36 as of July 2018. As of July 2018, 339,747-400s remain in service. Topic. 747 LCF Dreamlifter The 747-400 Dreamlifter, originally called the 747 Large Cargo Freighter or LCF, is a Boeing-designed modification of existing 747-400s to a larger configuration to ferry 787 Dreamliner subassemblies. Evergreen Aviation Technologies Corporation of Taiwan was contracted to complete modifications of 747-400s into Dreamlifters in Taoyuan. The aircraft flew for the first time on September 9, 2006 in a test flight. Modification of four aircraft was completed by February 2010. The Dreamlifters have been placed into service transporting sub-assemblies for the 787 program to the Boeing plant in Everett, Washington, for final assembly. The aircraft is certified to carry only essential crew and not passengers. Topic. 747-8 Boeing announced a new 747 variant, the 747-8, on November 14, 2005. Referred to as the 747 Advanced prior to its launch, the 747-8 uses the same engine and cockpit technology as the 787, hence the use of the 8. The variant is designed to be quieter, more economical, and more environmentally friendly. The 747-8's a fuselage is lengthened from 232 to 251 feet 70.8 to 76.4 meters, marking the first stretch variant of the aircraft. Power is supplied by General Electric GENX-2B67 engines. The 747-8 freighter, or 747-8F, is derived from the 747-400 ERF. The variant has 16% more payload capacity than its predecessor, allowing it to carry seven more standard air cargo containers, with a maximum payload capacity of 154 tons, 140 tons of cargo. 
As on previous 747 freighters, the 747-8F features an overhead nose door and a side door on the main deck plus a side door on the lower deck belly to aid loading and unloading. The 747-8F made its maiden flight on February 8, 2010. The variant received its amended type certificate jointly from the FAA and the European Aviation Safety Agency EASA, on August 19, 2011. The 8F was first delivered to Cargolux on October 12, 2011. The passenger version, named 747-8 Intercontinental or 747-8I, is designed to carry up to 467 passengers in a three-class configuration and fly more than 8,000 nmi kilometers at Mach 0.855. As a derivative of the already common 747-400, the 747-8 has the economic benefit of similar training and interchangeable parts. The type's first test flight occurred on March 20, 2011. The 747-8 has surpassed the Airbus A340-600 as the world's longest airliner. The first 8i was delivered in May 2012 to Lufthansa. The 747-8 has received 150 total orders, including 103 for the 8F and 47 for the 8i as of July 2018. Topic. Government, military, and other variants C-19 The U.S. Air Force gave this designation to the 747-100s used by some U.S. airlines and modified for use in the Civil Reserve Airlift Fleet. VC-25 This aircraft is the U.S. Air Force Very Important Person VIP version of the 747-200B. The U.S. Air Force operates two of them in VIP configuration as the VC-25A. Tail numbers 28,000 and 29,000 are popularly known as Air Force One, which is technically the air traffic call sign for any United States Air Force aircraft carrying the U.S. President. Although based on the 747-200B design, they include several innovations introduced on the 747-400. Partially completed aircraft from Everett, Washington, were flown to Wichita, Kansas, for final outfitting. Two new aircraft, based around the 747-8, are being procured which will be designated as VC-25B. E-4B, formerly known as the National Emergency Airborne Command Post, referred to colloquially as NECAP. This aircraft is now referred to as the National Airborne Operations Center, NAOC. YAL-1 This was the experimental airborne laser, a planned component of the U.S. National Missile Defense. Shuttle Carrier Aircraft SCA 2747s were modified to carry the Space Shuttle Orbiter. The first was a 747-100 N905NA, and the other was a 747-100 Senior N911NA. The first SCA carried the prototype Enterprise during the approach and landing tests in the late 1970s. The two SCA later carried all five operational Space Shuttle orbiters. C-33 This aircraft was a proposed U.S. military version of the 747-400F intended to augment the C-17 fleet. The plan was cancelled in favor of additional C-17s. KC-33A, a proposed 747 was also adapted as an aerial refueling tanker and was bid against the DC-1030 during the 1970s Advanced Cargo Transport Aircraft ACTA program that produced the KC-10A extender. Before the 1979 Iranian Revolution, Iran bought four 747-100 aircraft with air refueling boom conversions to support its fleet of F-4 Phantoms. 
There is a report of using a KC-33A in H-3 airstrike during Iran-Iraq War. It is unknown whether these aircraft remain usable as tankers. Since then, other proposals have emerged for conversion of later 747 to 400 aircraft for this role. 747 CMCA, this cruise missile carrier aircraft variant was considered by the U.S. Air Force during the development of the B-1 Lancer strategic bomber. It would have been equipped with 50 to 100 AGM-86 ALCM cruise missiles on rotary launchers. This plan was abandoned in favor of more conventional strategic bombers. 747 AAC, a Boeing study under contract from the USAF for an airborne aircraft carrier for up to 10 Boeing Model 985 to 121 microfighters with the ability to launch, retrieve, rearm, and refuel. Boeing believed that the scheme would be able to deliver a flexible and fast, carrier platform with global reach, particularly where other bases were not available. Modified versions of the 747-200 and Lockheed C-5A were considered as the base aircraft. The concept, which included a complementary 747 AWACS version with two reconnaissance microfighters was considered technically feasible in 1973. Evergreen 747 Supertanker, a Boeing 747-200 modified as an aerial application platform for fire fighting using 20,000 U.S. gallons L of firefighting chemicals. Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy Sophia, a former Pan Am Boeing 747 SP modified to carry a large infrared-sensitive telescope, in a joint venture of NASA and DLR. High altitudes are needed for infrared astronomy, to rise above infrared-absorbing water vapor in the atmosphere. A number of other governments also use the 747 as a VIP transport, including Bahrain, Brunei, India, Iran, Japan, Kuwait, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates. Several Boeing 747-8s have been ordered by Boeing Business Jet for conversion to VIP transports for several unidentified customers. Topic. Undeveloped variants Boeing has studied a number of 747 variants that have not gone beyond the concept stage. Topic. 747 Trijet During the late 1960s and early 1970s, Boeing studied the development of a shorter 747 with three engines, to compete with the smaller Lockheed L-1011 TriStar and McDonnell Douglas DC-10. The center engine would have been fitted in the tail with an S-duct intake similar to the L-1011s. Overall, the 747 Trijet would have had more payload, range, and passenger capacity than both of them. However, engineering studies showed that a major redesign of the 747 wing would be necessary. Maintaining the same 747 handling characteristics would be important to minimize pilot retraining. Boeing decided instead to pursue a shortened four-engine 747, resulting in the 747 SP. Topic: 747 to 500. In January 1986, Boeing outlined preliminary studies to build a larger, ultra-long-haul version named the 747-500, which would enter service in the mid to late 1990s. 
The derivative would use more efficient unducted fan UDF engines, prop fans made by General Electric, be stretched including the upper deck section to a capacity of 500 seats, have a new wing to reduce drag, cruise at a faster speed to reduce flight times, and have a range of at least 8,700 nmi 16,000 km, which would allow airlines to fly non-stop between London, England and Sydney, Australia. The 747 to 500 was never built. Topic 747 ASB. Boeing announced the 747 ASB Advanced Short Body in 1986 as a response to the Airbus A340 and the McDonnell Douglas MD11. This aircraft design would have combined the advanced technology used on the 747-400 with the foreshortened 747SP fuselage. The aircraft was to carry 295 passengers a range of 8,000 nmi 9,200 miles, 15,000 kilometers. However, airlines were not interested in the project and it was cancelled in 1988 in favor of the 777. Topic. 747-500X, 600X, and 700X Boeing announced the 747-500X and 600X at the 1996 Farnborough Air Show. The proposed models would have combined the 747's fuselage with a new 251 feet 77 meters span wing derived from the 777. Other changes included adding more powerful engines and increasing the number of tires from 2 to 4 on the nose landing gear and from 16 to 20 on the main landing gear. The 747 to 500X concept featured an increased fuselage length of 18 feet, 5.5 meters to 250 feet, 76.2 meters long, and the aircraft was to carry 462 passengers over a range up to 8,700 nautical miles, 10,000 miles, 16,100 kilometers, with a gross weight of over 1.0 mlb, 450 tons. The 747 to 600x concept featured a greater stretch to 279 feet, 85 meters, with seating for 548 passengers, a range of up to 7,700 nmi, 8,900 miles. 14,300 kilometers, and a gross weight of 1.2 mlb, 540 tons. A third study concept, the 747 to 700X, would have combined the wing of the 747 to 600X with a widened fuselage, allowing it to carry 650 passengers over the same range as a 747 to 400. The cost of the changes from previous 747 models, in particular the new wing for the 747 to 500X and 600X, was estimated to be more than $5 billion. Boeing was not able to attract enough interest to launch the aircraft. Topic 747X and 747X stretch As Airbus progressed with its A3XX study, Boeing offered a 747 derivative as an alternative in 2000, a more modest proposal than the previous 500X and 600X that retained the 747's overall wing design and add a segment at the root, increasing the span to 229 feet 69.8 meters. Power would have been supplied by either the Engine Alliance GP7172 or the Rolls-Royce Trent 600, which were also proposed for the 767-400 ERX. A new flight deck based on the 777s would be used. 
The 747X aircraft was to carry 430 passengers over ranges of up to 8,700 nmi, 10,000 miles, 16,100 kilometers. The 747X stretch would be extended to 263 feet, 80.2 meters long, allowing it to carry 500 passengers over ranges of up to 7,800 nmi, 9,000 miles. 14,500 kilometers. Both would feature an interior based on the 777. Freighter versions of the 747X and 747X stretch were also studied. Like its predecessor, the 747X family was unable to garner enough interest to justify production, and it was shelved along with the 767-400 ERX in March 2001, when Boeing announced the Sonic Cruiser concept. Though the 747X design was less costly than the 747-500X and 600X, it was criticized for not offering a sufficient advance from the existing 747-400. The 747X did not make it beyond the drawing board, but the 747-400X being developed concurrently moved into production to become the 747-400ER. Topic: 747-400X QLR After the end of the 747X program, Boeing continued to study improvements that could be made to the 747. The 747-400X QLR quiet long range was meant to have an increased range of 7,980 nmi 9,200 miles, 14,800 kilometers, with improvements to boost efficiency and reduce noise. Improvements studied included raked wingtips similar to those used on the 767-400ER and a sawtooth engine nacelle for noise reduction. Although the 747-400X QLR did not move to production, many of its features were used for the 747 Advanced, which has now been launched as the 747-8. Topic. Operators As of July 2018, 462 Boeing 747s are in airline service, with British Airways being the largest operator with 36,747-400s. The last U.S. passenger Boeing 747 was retired from Delta Airlines in December 2017, after it flew for every American major carrier since its 1970 introduction. Delta flew three of its last four aircraft on a farewell tour, from Seattle to Atlanta on December 19 then to Los Angeles and Minneapolis, St. Paul on December 20, as the IATA forecast an increase in air freight from 4% to 5% in 2018 fueled by booming trade for time-sensitive goods, from smartphones to fresh flowers, demand for freighters is strong while passenger 747s are phased out. Of the 1,544 produced, 890 are retired. As of 2018, a small subset of those which were intended to be parted out get $3 million D checks before flying again. Young minus 400s are sold for 320 million yuan, $50 million, and Boeing stopped converting freighters, which used to cost nearly $30 million. This comeback helped the airframer financing arm Boeing Capital to shrink its exposure to the 747-8 from $1.07 billion in 2017 to $481 million. Topic. Orders and deliveries Boeing 747 orders and deliveries cumulative by year orders deliveries Boeing data through end of March 2019 
Topic Model Summary Source for orders and deliveries, Boeing data through end of March 2019. Topic. Accidents and incidents The 747 has been involved in 146 aviation accidents and incidents, including 61 accidents and hull losses which resulted in 3,722 fatalities. The last crash was Turkish Airlines Flight 6491 in January 2017. There were also 24 deaths in 32 aircraft hijackings, such as Pan Am Flight 73 where a Boeing 747-121 was hijacked by four terrorists and resulted in 20 deaths. Few crashes have been attributed to design flaws of the 747. The Tenerife Airport disaster resulted from pilot error and communications failure, while the Japan Airlines Flight 123 and China Airlines Flight 611 crashes stemmed from improper aircraft repair. United Airlines Flight 811, which suffered an explosive decompression mid-flight on February 24, 1989, led the National Transportation Safety Board NTSB, to issue a recommendation that the Boeing 747-100 and 747-200 cargo doors similar to those on the Flight 811 aircraft be modified to those featured on the Boeing 747-400. Korean Airlines Flight 007 was shot down by a Soviet fighter aircraft in 1983 after it had strayed into Soviet territory, causing U.S. President Ronald Reagan to authorize the then strictly military Global Positioning System GPS for civilian use. Accidents due to design deficiencies included TWA Flight 800, where a 747-100 exploded in midair on July 17, 1990. 96, probably due to sparking electricity wires inside the fuel tank. This finding led the FAA to propose a rule requiring installation of an inerting system in the center fuel tank of most large aircraft that was adopted in July 2008, after years of research into solutions. At the time, the new safety system was expected to cost $100,000 to $450,000 per aircraft and weigh approximately 200 pounds El Al Flight 1862 crashed after the fuse pins for an engine broke off shortly after takeoff due to metal fatigue. Instead of dropping away from the wing, the engine knocked off the adjacent engine and damaged the wing. Topic aircraft on display as increasing numbers of classic 747-100 and 747-200 series aircraft have been retired, some have found their way into museums or other uses. In recent years, some older 747-300s and 747-400s have also found their way into museums as well. 20,235-001-747-121 Registration N-7470 City of Everett, the first 747 and prototype, is at the Museum of Flight, Seattle, Washington, U.S. where it is sometimes leased to Boeing for test purposes. 19,896-019-747-132 SF Registration N-481EV at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum, McMinnville, Oregon. 19,651-025-747-121 Registration N-747GE at the Pima Air and Space Museum, Tucson, Arizona. 19,778-027-747-151 Registration N601 U.S. Nose at the National Air and Space Museum, Washington District of Columbia, 20107-086-747-123 Registration N905NA, a NASA shuttle carrier aircraft, at the Johnson Space Center, Houston, Texas. 
20,269 150th 747 to 136 registration GAWNG nose at Hiller Aviation Museum, San Carlos, California. 20,239 160th 747 to 244 B registration ZS San nicknamed La Bombo, at the South African Airways Museum Society, Rand Airport, Johannesburg, South Africa. 20,541 200th 747 to 128 registration FBPVJ at Musée de l'Air et de la Space, Paris, France. 20,770 213th 747 to 2B 5B registration HL 7463 at Jongsok Aviation Center, Jeju, South Korea. 20,713 219th 747 to 212 B SF registration N482 EV at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum, McMinnville, Oregon, as part of the Wings and Waves Water Park. 21,134 288th 747 SP44 registration ZSSPC at the South African Airways Museum Society, Rand Airport, Johannesburg, South Africa. 21,093 307th 747 SP86 registration EPIAA at Tehran Aerospace Exhibition, Tehran, Iran. 21,549 336th 747-206 B Registration PH Buck at the Aviodrome, Lelystad, the Netherlands. 21,588 342nd 747-230 B Registration DABYM at Technik Museum Spire, Spire, Germany. 22,145 410th 747-238 B Registration VHEBQ at the Qantas Founders Outback Museum, Longreach, Queensland, Australia. 21,942 471st 747-212 B Registration N642NW Nose at Museum of Aeronautical Science, Chiba Prefecture, Japan. 23,719 696th 747-451 Registration N661US at the Delta Flight Museum, Atlanta, Georgia. This particular plane was the first 747 to 400 in service, as well as the prototype. 24,354 731st 747 to 438 registration VHOYA at Illawarra Regional Airport, Albion Park Rail, New South Wales, Australia. 24,732nd 747-406 Registration PHBFB at Corindon Village Hotel in Badoevadorp, the Netherlands. Topic. Other uses Upon its retirement from service, the 747 No. 2 in the production line was dismantled and shipped to Hapyeong, Namyangju, Jongjidu, South Korea where it was reassembled, repainted in a livery similar to that of Air Force One and converted into a restaurant. Originally flown commercially by Pan Am as N747PA, Clipper 1 T trip, and repaired for service following a tail strike, it stayed with the airline until its bankruptcy. The restaurant closed by 2009, and the aircraft was scrapped in 2010. A former British Airways 747 200B, GBDXJ, is parked at the Dunsfold Aerodrome in Surrey, England, and has been used as a movie set for productions such as the 2006 James Bond film, Casino Royale. The plane also appears frequently in the BBC television series Top Gear, which is filmed at Dunsfold.
The Jumbo Hostel, using a converted 747 to 200 formerly registered as 9 volts SQE, opened at Arlanda Airport, Stockholm in January 2009. The wings of a 747 have been recycled as roofs of a house in Malibu, California. Topic: Specifications. Topic. Notable appearances in media Following its debut, the 747 rapidly achieved iconic status, appearing in numerous film productions such as Airport 1975 and Airport 77 disaster films, Air Force One, Die Hard 2, and Executive Decision. Appearing in over 300 film productions the 747 is one of the most widely depicted civilian aircraft and is considered by many as one of the most iconic in film history. The aircraft entered the cultural lexicon as the original jumbo jet, a term coined by the aviation media to describe its size, and was also nicknamed Queen of the Skies. Topic. See also Related development Boeing 747 LCF Boeing 747-8 Boeing 747-400 Boeing 747-SP Boeing E-4 Boeing VC-25 Shuttle carrier aircraft aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era. Airbus A340-600. Airbus A380. Ilyushin Il-96. Antonov An-124. Boeing 777-300ER. McDonnell Douglas MD-12. Suhoi KR-860 Related lists List of aircraft List of Boeing 747 operators List of jet airliners List of megaprojects <laughs>